gentlemen. It's time to fire up the grill. Wild women. Gus. G-R-U-B. M-G. Hailstones the size of soft balls. And Maddie Johns. So. Triple M Breakfast. Make me feel so young. The Grill Team. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Monday. Wow. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we today? <laughs> yeah, not going okay, not too are we? Uh, tell you what, what a weekend of football. Now there's six left. Of course, uh, uh, the Dragons and South Sydney depart. South Sydney's last month of football. Um, their fans must have been watching yesterday saying, boy, oh, boy, isn't 12 months a long time? Mm, sure is. The momentum they had last year compared to... Well, basically, they've gone down the tubes, haven't they? They've been flogged by the by the doggies, the Broncos, the Roosters, and now the Sharkies. We'll talk about the uh, that the recovery session, but there's far more well, no, pressing matter. A, yeah, okay, guys, <laughs> this much is sadder it. story. Let me set this up. St Mary's uh, ground, the Balmain UTS Tigers up against the Northwest Polecats. What is a polecat? Is that a G? Is that a G up? <laughs> a polecat is what is a, a polecat? That's a cat who climbs up a pole. That's jail talk, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Could be. Well, that's that's uh, the Porn King, our producer, who's actually the boss today. Because yeah. we've seen off another boss, boys. So, yeah. In the last month, we've taken two down. Well, then, this one, though. But, uh, Legitimate. He, like Matty, Matty White, our new boss, who's doing a fantastic job. He's had a day off. He's, he, having, he's a good one. He's a keeper. He is I've a got, got one he's, he's got to read my book. He's got to read my day off manual. You don't have Mondays or Fridays off, Whitey. Oh, God. And if you go for one day off, you've got yeah, to go two. for two days. Oh, that's, that's, Let's get yeah. the Porn King in because they won the minor premiership by eight points. Absolutely hot, raving yeah. favourites. and um, Raving something. What, what are you... <laughs> What exactly? They were raging. What, what happened, Maxie? <laughs> well, I brought MG down to you know give the boys a bit of a prep up. It's a good idea. And yeah. the first, his opening line was, "I was here two weeks ago over the under 14s their grand final, and they lost by forty points." Well, <laughs> that's a good start. Not a good start, MG, considering most footballers are superstitious. <laughs> okay, so then what happened? Then no, he the gave the, jer- no, he no, gave the jerseys me, away. Let me reiterate. Excuse oh. me, mate. We're talking to Max here. What happened, mate? Yeah, he, he uh, had a little bit of a chat. You know what we needed to do on grand final day. Gave away the jerseys, and then we lost uh, 20 to 16. No, but what, was the, what was the score at half time? 20 nil. <laughs> So tell me, I'm football I'm a, to bleed MG out yeah. of your system. I made a lasting impression, which was great. No, I tried to make the fact that I, w- I wasn't the 14s, I was uh, a C grade team. And even though you get somebody in to give jerseys, I don't know why people give, get someone in like Mate, a, an ex player. It's, it's it, odd, isn't it? It is under, because you I change under, the whole. No, but you, you guys wouldn't understand because you're big deals. But No, we're not big deals. You, no, the thing is that we've, rem- we've remembered how you guys playing footy, so it's a big thing for you to come and give yeah, us a jersey. Yeah, but why would you change your routine from, the, from week to week the whole year? Mate, I, look, I yeah. did him a favour, and obviously it didn't work. And I apologise <laughs> to your team. I'll never do it again. But they lost twenty nil in the first half after your inspirational words. Yeah, apparently, yeah. The, apparently after they all settled down, they lost. And a couple of uh, Max's mates said, "What'd you get him in?" For? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you never have to do the job again, MJ. Oftentimes you get asked. I get asked sometimes. So can you come and give the word? I said no. No, <laughs> nah, mate. Because you know what, mate. Uh, honestly, I don't want to even be, go anywhere near your side, mate. Uh, I don't want to have any responsibility. Sunday Sports Roundup here on Alive 90.5, where it's 19 minutes to three. I'm Gordon Allen, and joining us live online now, not quite sure how good the celebrations are, but Rob Wiesback, the president of the Norwest Polecats Rugby League Club up there at Kellyville. Rob, great win yesterday in the grand final, and congratulations. Thanks, Gordon. Well, we've also got here um, Dan Jackson, our coach, so he's uh, decided to jump on the interview too, but yeah, thank you very much. Well, mate, it um, was a bad day for uh, UTS uh, there in the student tertiary rugby league because they were in first and second grade. We'll just quickly look at second grade. Uh, the Cumberland Beavers, well, uh, of course, last weekend they defeated the Polecats uh, 23-22 in the, uh, in the final there, but yesterday in the grand final, uh, the Beavers 26 defeated UTS 22 in second grade, so a good win there to the Cumberland Beavers who played just down the road at Ollie Webb Reserve. Yeah, look, it was uh, really good for the um, tertiary teams in the West this, uh, this uh, year. So, um, yeah, congratulations to them. Unfortunately, they got us um, a week ago, but, yeah, look, they went on and um, uh, made sure UTS uh, helped, uh, helped UTS not win anything yesterday. Well, that's exactly right, because in first grade, uh, the minor premiers, UTS, well, of course, uh, you beat them in the major semi-final 22-20 there in the last uh, 30 seconds, and uh, last weekend, well, UTS defeated Sydney Uni uh, 52 points to nil. And, uh, of course, uh, yesterday, well, the Polecats were able to win 20 points to 16, four tries, two goals to three tries and two goals. And it was your 50th grand final appearance since the club was formed as the Catholic College of Education at Castle Hill in 1975. But uh, I'm led to believe that two players were sent off and the referee needed to be replaced as well. Uh, look, it, it, the game had everything. Uh, yeah, we were up by 20 after half-time. We lost both captains. They got sent off. 
Um, the ref got, you know, fell over and uh, injured himself. They had to replace him with a standby ref. So uh, the game final had everything, and it came down to the last half oh, minute. Um, so how good was that? Well, that was, as we've said, it was the club's 50th grand final appearance. And congratulations, of course, to, uh, to Dan Jackson. So, uh, Dan, if you're listening there, uh, how did you rate the game and, uh, and who do you think were your best players yesterday? Uh, I couldn't pick one standout, to be honest. It was pretty good. Um, all the boys stood up, everyone backed themselves and played for each other, which is probably the difference in the end. Um, uh, big Joey Nawini has had a massive year and Shane Rowe, um, Shane Norford. Shane Brown ended up getting man of the match, so um, Brownie, Brownie pretty much got the Clive Churchill, and um, he, <laughs> you know, he played really good, played out of his skin. He's gone from playing half back to, to standing at hooker, and he's, he's, he had a monster game yesterday. And I couldn't, I couldn't really narrow it down. All the boys played really well. Um, everyone backed each other and helped each other out, and that, that's all you could ask for as a coach. And um, yeah, the celebrations have been going strong for a, for a fair few hours now. And I'm sure they'll probably continue. Do you think that uh, game last week, uh, Dan, where UTS uh, b- uh, beat Sydney Uni down there at Norfolk 52 to nil, it was pretty much a training run for them. It wasn't really any physical, much physical contact in that game. Yeah, well, we, I, I stayed for about eight minutes, to be honest with you, Gordon. I, I stayed for the first eight or eight or ten minutes, and I left and left a couple of tries in, and I said that they're going to do this pretty easy. And they, uh, the boys messaged me saying it was 52 nil. I, I believed it straight away because they just, they just went through the motions and, and um, we hadn't played, we played two games in pretty much two, two or three games in, in two months um, and they, they had a few games under their belt before they played us so they were ready for it and I think after the first major semi um, they were hungry because it was their first loss and they knew we were the real deal and um, when we came out in the grand final, they, they gave it everything to the first 10. We, we weathered that storm, which, which was our plan all along. And then um, the boys just, you know, stuck at it, stuck at it. We got up 20 nil at half time. We did our best to throw it away, but um, <laughs> in, in, the end, in the end, the boys hang on. And, and to, to be honest, Gordon, if, if, um, if, we didn't, if we didn't support each other as much as we did and um, defend like we meant it, um, we would have lost because we, we gave them enough ball to win the, win the game, but they, they didn't want it enough as, as much as we did. Were there any uh, key turning points in the game, uh, Dan, that you felt uh, went your way? Um, there was one that I thought went against us, and that was we were rolling up the field, we were up by 10, rolling up the field, and the ref went down. Um, he's probably he's the best ref in the comp, this bloke, and he's gone. Only a young bloke went down with a rolled ankle, and as soon as he went down, I was a bit worried because the bloke had come on uh, we're not very, we weren't very fond of him um, since earlier in the year and he's come on and he, he stamped his authority early with a couple of dodgy calls for them but um, no, just, just, as soon as the boy, as soon as the, I seen the boys as hungry as they were that's all that matters and um, they, they really stood up a um, couple of other key points um, we just kept giving them ball but we just kept turning up and defending so that's all that that's all, that's all I've seen from the boys so um, no, no massive key turning points against us or with us um, we, we were just hungrier than them So uh, Rob Wiesback uh, the president of the uh, North West Polecats there how does this uh, victory yesterday rate amongst uh, the many that you've seen and been involved with with the club? Oh, look um, considering we're massive underdogs um, uh, it, it's right up there look um, uh, yeah, it, and the guys too they, they worked hard um, it's it's, we've been one team, and we've been working towards this uh, ever since um, you know the start of the season. Uh, and the guys, they had it in their mind that they were going to get there. We didn't get, you know, we didn't get the side that we wanted to play UTS throughout the year. Uh, but come the semi, we, we finally got the right mix. We got right, finally got the right deal of players. And um, look, you know, two, two games in the finals, two wins, and a, and a premiership. So it can't be any happier. Than I am right now. No, that's a fantastic season for the Northwest Polecats. And uh, Rob, where to from here now for the Polecats? Look, um, well, we've already um, got Dan Jackson saying he's coming back next year to um, try and go back to back, I hope. Uh, and um, hopefully, all our, we can retain all our players. And yeah, hopefully, 
go on from here. Well, certainly, let's make sh- let's hope that it will be probably the 51st grand final appearance for the uh, the club since it was formed in 1975 as the Catholic College of Education there at Castle Hill. And I have no doubt, Rob, that the uh, refereeing would have been par excellence from the University Cup yeah, Referees Association. Thanks very much, Rob. And Dan Jackson, coach of the Northwest Polecats, well done on a uh, on that victory yesterday in the grand final in the Student Tertiary Rugby League competition. And of course, as you said, Rob, well, out west, the Polecats first grade premiers and uh, the Cumberland Beavers down there at Ollie Webb second grade. Well done to both clubs and uh, enjoy your celebrations and look forward to uh, talking to you later. Thanks, Gordon, mate. Have a great day. No problems. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, yeah. Well, uh, live rugby league there itself uh, with the boys are still celebrating. Uh, up at uh, Kellyville Park there. Well done to the uh, Polecats and, of course, uh, the Cumberland Beavers in the Student Tertiary Rugby League competition here on Sunday Sports Roundup, where it's coming up to 10 minutes to uh, 3. Uh, Adam, live scores. Let's go uh, around the uh, the different venues. And then, Dave, uh, sorry, uh, Rod, you'll be talking...